break our hearts, Lord, really with the things that break your heart. We want to love what you love. We want to hate what you hate, Jesus. We want to be your friends that comfort your heart, Lord, in intercession, God. Tip the bowls of prayer, Lord, over us. Let the accumulated prayers, the previous generations, be downloaded on us and the generation that begs for your glory. The sound of the nations worshiping. Hear the sound of sons and daughters. Who will go for us? Who will shout to the corners of the earth that Christ is King? Well, slavery is a closed chapter in America's history, but the prayers of African American slaves are part of an eternal heritage. And that heritage of prayer is sparking revival today. Gorman Woodfin explains. A kettle once owned by African American slaves is being used for revival. Will Ford, founder of Hilkiah Ministries, says the 250-year-old cooking kettle was once used by his slave ancestors for praying. What they did was they would take this pot into the barn late at night while nobody was around, turn it upside down, and prop it up with a rock and they pray for freedom and get underneath it. And they pray and so that this pot would muffle their voices. After visiting key sites including Jamestown, Virginia, America's first settlement, Will continues to use the kettle as a symbol of spiritual breakthrough and freedom. Well, here to share more on the kettle revival, will you please welcome to the 700 Club, Will Ford. Will, it's great to have Thank you here. Compromise and wink at slavery. And I began to look at it and see that it was the prayers of that godly remnant of people that prayed in the first and the second great awakening into this nation because slavery was going on during that time period. So, I mean, think about it. The very same region in the nation, New England in the Northeast, that was the birthplace of slavery, became the birthplace of abolition because God sent revival. Pastor Dutch Sheets and I were, were talking about this, and he said, well, you know, this kettle reminds me of Revelation 5 and 8, the bowls in heaven full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And then Zechariah 14 and 20, part B of that verse says, And the cooking pots in the house of the Lord should be like the bowls before his altar. So here's this cooking pot that's caught muffled prayers, the same way there's a bowl in heaven that catches our prayers as incense. Well, and one of the astonishing things, well, about prayer is, mm -hmm. and about God is that yeah. it's not trapped in time as right. we are, so that the prayers of the saints that use this right. are yes. present in, in eternity They're today. present in eternity. They're present today. Uh, Hebrews 11.38 is a powerful verse of Scripture. It says that all these by faith, uh, they were proof of their faith, but they would receive what was promised. So yes. there was a part from us that wouldn't be made perfect without us. There are things that God started with them, but well, he wants to complete through this generation the things he promised Martin Luther King, the things he promised Jonathan Edwards, the things he promised William Seymour, other, other powerful Christians in this nation. And it's a reminder of the covenant promises that he's made to people in this nation. You know, we look at the things that are going on in this nation right now with the, uh, with the, the shell disaster and, and the things going on with Iraq and, and everything else. But, you know, there's still hope for this nation because God remembers the prayers of our grandfathers. He remembers the prayers of those who have gone before us. And he's looking for a generation of people who will lay down their lives for the freedom of the next generation. Boy, that's a word of hope for yeah. Christians today as we feel sometimes so surrounded by right. things culturally that are counter to what we believe that mm -hmm. our prayers yeah. have power. Yeah, and you think about it. Dred Scott was a Supreme Court law that kept slavery intact in that time. And I believe the Lord has left this kettle force to say the same God who broke the power of Dred Scott, he can break the power of Roe v. Wade. That's the injustice of our day. There's a prayer bowl over this nation. There's a prayer bowl over the nations of the earth. And he's looking for a new godly remnant of people to come together to tip the bowls of intercession over this nation mm -hmm. and the nations of the earth. You know, the Bible says that the prayers, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And so in our day, this is one of the things that God has called you and I to. And thank you so much for encouragement in that area. Thank you. Well, it's great to and have you, know, the, you the here. Thing, the thing about this I like to tell people is that, you know, history still belongs to the intercessor. Amen. That's their hope. Amen. Thank you. Sometimes you can't reach for your future until you've been touched by your past. I remember this 200-year-old kettle pot used by the slaves in my family. 
I told you before, they use it for cooking, they use it for washing clothes, but secretly they use it for prayer. They were owned by a very wicked slave master who beat them for, pray, who beat them for any reason, and praying was one of them. Now, he wanted his slaves to be Christians because he knew that Christian slaves made better workers. But he pervert the gospel and say, slaves, be obedient to your masters if you want to go to heaven. And it's not just about when we come here on Sunday or Wednesday. It's about how we leave from this place and represent the kingdom of God. When they see our love and unity, you know what the greatest prayer we can come in agreement with is John 17. Jesus said, Father, that your glory would come and make them one so that the world would believe. In other words, the unity that we have with each other will bring about such a profound conviction of the Holy Spirit on other people. They'll say, must, what must I do to get that love? What must I do to get to that, that kind of acceptance, that kind of fellowship? What must I do to be saved? You know, I talked about my Uncle Willie and how he gave his back unwillingly to be beaten but you know what the greatest sacrifice anybody ever made for the freedom of the next generation is Jesus Christ who was strapped to a tree was beaten and scourged and made himself an intercessor for the, for the freedom of suing generations to come it's awesome what God is doing here right now listen you know we talk about generational curses and they're very real and they're powerful. But generational blessings. You're looking at the fruit of it right here. See, you don't know what I was like 10, 15, 20 years ago, the mess I was. But let me tell you something. The blessings are more powerful than the curses. They go to even a thousand generations. That means basically forever. So I want to lead you all corporately in a prayer. We're going to call forth generational blessings, okay? Amen. And give the Lord a shout. Well, we decree generational curses. We've broken them. We decree, Lord, spiritual inheritances are being released. We say that the bowls are tipping over this place. That you're releasing thunder and fire and lightning and earthquakes. That you're releasing judgment, Lord, on behalf, Lord, and the saints of the Most High. We decree, Lord, right now that healing is coming and justice is coming. We decree, Lord, the miraculous is being released. We decree souls are being saved as a result of what you're doing here in this work today. We say the synergy of the ages, Lord, is being made manifest. We say that the commanded blessing of Psalm 133 is being up on this house. We say, Lord, that your invocation of your commanded blessing rests upon this house. Here's the land that should please Jesus. Come. President Bush in his 9-11 speech when he was in the chapel, he said this. He said, we are the generation of people that don't understand what sacrifice is. Because we basically lived off the sacrifice of all those who've gone before us. But now it has come upon us that the commitment of our fathers has now become the calling of our time. It's time for us to lay down our lives for the freedom of the next generation. Powers of God.